as the night wraps the world in a soft starlit blanket and the hustle of the day melts into serene silence. Let's embark on a gentle journey, one that cradles your heart and whispers to your soul. Imagine yourself nestled in the warm embrace of comfort, each breath a step further into a realm of peace and calm. Tonight, let me introduce you to Lyra, a soulful musician from the quaint village of Eurydica, where mountains meet the sea. With her flute, she captures the song of nature yet yearns for a depth she's yet to find. As you settle deeper into your sanctuary of rest, join Lyra in a tale of magic, longing, and the discovery of a power that echoes the music of the heavens. Close your eyes. Breathe in the tranquility of this moment and allow the story of Lyra to be your lullaby. May it guide you to a place of serene dreams, where the melodies of Lyra's journey blend with the whispers of your own heart. Good night, and may the enchantment of our tale cradle you into a restful, dream-filled slumber. Chapter 1 The Discovery of the Lyre In the village of Eurydica, nestled between the towering embrace of the mountains and the ceaseless whisper of the sea, lived a young musician named Lyra. Her home was humble, a thatched cottage shared with her family, who toiled from dawn till dusk to eke out a living from the stony, unforgiving earth. Lyra's heart, however, belonged not to the soil, but to the ethereal realm of music. With a simple wooden flute, she would capture the essence of the wind, the rhythm of the waves, and the quietude of the mountain air. Yet, despite her passion, Lyra felt a profound emptiness. Her music, though heartfelt, lacked the depth and power she yearned for, a reflection of her soul's unspoken desires. Lyra's days were spent in the fields, but her evenings belonged to melody. Under the canopy of stars, she would play her flute, sending her dreams soaring into the night. The villagers, weary from their labor, found solace in her music, a gentle reprieve from their toils. Yet Lyra's spirit wavered on the brink of despair, for within her burned an insatiable longing for a greatness she could scarcely comprehend. One fateful evening, as twilight merged with the shadow of night, a peculiar melody, both foreign and familiar, drifted through the air. It was a music unlike any Lyra had ever known, infused with a power that tugged at the very core of her being. Compelled by a force she could not resist, Lyra followed the melody. It led her to the edge of the village, where the land whispered tales of old, into the embrace of the ancient woods known as Thalia's breath. Beneath the cloak of night, guided by the silvery light of the moon, Lyra ventured deeper into Thalia's breath. The woods, ancient and wise, 
whispered secrets of a bygone era when the veil between the divine and the mortal was thin. With each step, the melody that had beckoned her heart grew stronger, its harmony intertwining with the rustle of leaves and the soft murmur of the night breeze. In Thalia's breath, time seemed to stand still, the air thrumming with an energy that spoke of old magic and older gods. The trees themselves appeared to watch over Lyra, their branches swaying in a silent benediction as she passed. It was as if the very essence of the woods recognized her, a chosen one marked by fate for a destiny larger than life. As the melody led her deeper into the heart of the forest, Lyra felt an inexplicable connection to the land, a sense of belonging that transcended her simple existence. Here, amidst the whispering woods, the divisions between past and present blurred. And for a moment, Lyra stood at the crossroads of time, a bridge between worlds. It was then, in a clearing where the moonlight danced upon the earth, casting shadows that played between reality and myth that Lyra found the source of the melody. A lyre, its form cloaked in vines, as though the forest itself had sought to keep this treasure hidden from unworthy eyes. The instrument's golden strings shimmered with an otherworldly light, a beacon of pure, untamed magic. Despite the warnings of old tales, tales that spoke of the peril that befell those who dared to meddle in the affairs of gods, Lyra was drawn to the lyre. A force beyond her understanding urged her forward, a voice without sound that whispered of her destiny to unearth a power long forgotten. With a mixture of reverence and trepidation, Lyra reached out to the lyre, her fingers brushing against the golden strings that seemed to hum with anticipation. The moment her skin made contact, the vines encasing the instrument receded into the earth as if commanded by an unseen force leaving the lyre unbound, gleaming under the moon's caress. It was as though the forest itself acknowledged Lyra's right to claim this celestial artifact, a gift from the realm of the gods. The lyre was exquisite, its body crafted from an ethereal wood that shimmered with a golden hue and the strings radiated a light that was not of this world. It was an object of immense beauty and power, forged in the heavens by Apollo himself, imbued with the essence of music and harmony. To behold, it was to glimpse the divine, to feel the pulse of creation at one's fingertips, as Lyra tentatively plucked a string, a single, pure note rang out, reverberating through the clearing and into the depths of the forest. The sound was unlike anything she had ever heard or imagined. It contained the beauty of the dawn, the sorrow of the twilight, and the mystery of the night sky. It was a melody that transcended the boundaries of the mortal world, reaching into the soul and awakening a longing for something greater, something beyond the confines of earthly existence. 
With each note she played, Lyra felt a connection to the lyre that went beyond mere physical touch. It was as if the instrument knew her, understood her deepest desires and fears, and sought to meld its divine essence with her mortal spirit. The music that flowed from the lyre under her guidance was a symphony of light and shadow, a dance of the elements, a celebration of life itself. In the heart of Thalia's breath, under the watchful gaze of the moon and stars, Lyra, with Apollo's lyre cradled gently in her arms, began to explore the depths of its divine power. With each string she caressed, melodies poured forth, each note a testament to the lyre's heavenly origin. The music that emanated from the golden strings was not merely sound, but a living essence, weaving through the fabric of the natural world, bending it to her will. The forest responded to her call. Winds danced to the rhythm of her melodies. Trees swayed in harmonious motion and the creatures of the night stood in rapt attention, as if witnessing the unfolding of a sacred ritual. Lyra, once a simple musician with dreams that reached beyond the stars, found herself at the center of a convergence between heaven and earth, a vessel for the lyre's boundless power. As she delved deeper into the Lyre's mysteries, Lyra discovered its ability to evoke the elemental forces of nature. A gentle strum summoned the soft caress of the breeze, while a fervent pluck called forth the tempest's fury. The Lyre could mend the broken, soothe the weary soul, and bring joy to the heart. Yet, it also harbored the potential for destruction, for in its strings lay the power to unleash chaos, to rend the sky and tear the earth asunder. Lyra's heart swelled with a mixture of awe and fear. The lyre, for all its beauty and majesty, was a reminder of the thin line between creation and destruction, a balance that she must now navigate. Her music, once a mere echo of her innermost desires, had become a force capable of shaping the world around her. With the dawn came the realization of the breath of the liar's power, and with it, a transformation within Lyra. No longer was she the village's humble musician. She had become something more, a conduit for the divine, her very essence intertwined with the celestial instrument. The first notes of power had been unleashed and with them, Lyra's destiny was irrevocably altered. As she made her way back to Eureka, the lyre cradled in her arms, the world around her seemed to respond to her presence. The air shimmered with unseen melodies, and the earth beneath her feet thrummed with a rhythm that echoed her heartbeat. She had tapped into the fundamental harmony of the universe, a melody that predated the gods themselves. Lyra's return to the village was marked by a performance that would be spoken of for generations. Gathered in the village square, her people watched in awe as she played. 
The music that flowed from the lyre was transformative, transcending the boundaries of human experience. It healed the sick, rejuvenated the weary, and inspired hope in the hearts of all who heard it. The village once a place of simple pleasures and hard toil, became a beacon of light, a testament to the power of divine music. But with great power comes great responsibility. Lyra knew that the lyre, for all its beauty and potential for creation, also held the capacity for destruction. Its strings could weave harmony, but they could also sow discord. She had seen it in the forest, how a single note played in anger could unleash a storm, how a melody of sorrow could darken the skies. The balance between creation and destruction lay in her hands, a delicate dance of light and shadow. As the days passed, Lyra's understanding of the lyre deepened. She learned to wield its power with care, mindful of the consequences of each note played. Her music brought prosperity to Eurydica, drawing visitors from distant lands, eager to witness the miracles wrought by Apollo's lyre. Yet, with each passing day, the weight of her gift grew heavier. She was no longer one of them. She had become a figure of myth, a bridge between the mortal and the divine. As the sun rose over the village of Eurydica, casting its golden light upon the rooftops and the sea beyond, the fame of Lyra and her divine lyre had already spread like wildfire across the land. Travelers from distant corners of the earth, driven by tales of a music that could touch the soul and bend the forces of nature, made their pilgrimage to witness the miracle of Apollo's gift. The enchantment that Lyra's music wove was palpable. Her performances transcended the mere act of playing. They were ceremonies of pure beauty, where the veil between the mortal and the divine thinned to gossamer. The sick were healed. The land flourished. And for a moment, during her concerts, peace reigned supreme, as if the gods themselves had descended to listen. But with the wonder came the shadows of bewilderment. Lyra, once a simple village girl with dreams of music, found herself thrust into a realm of expectations and responsibilities that weighed heavily upon her. The gift of the lyre, as much as it was a source of joy, became a burden. Its divine origin attracted not only those who sought the beauty of its music, but also those with darker desires. Whispers began to spread, not just among the mortals who coveted the power of the lyre for their glory, but also among the denizens of Olympus, who viewed the emergence of such a powerful artifact in the hands of a mortal with a mix of fascination and concern. The gods, unpredictable in their whims, could be as much a threat as a blessing. Lyra found herself caught between two worlds, belonging fully to neither, to the people of Eurydica and the countless strangers who sought her out, 
she was the figure of awe, almost mythic in stature. Yet, within her heart, she remained the girl who had wandered into the forest, driven by a longing for something more. The gap between Lyra and those she loved began to widen. A gulf widened by the very gift that had brought them so much joy. As the days passed, the enchantment of her new life began to fray at the edges. The constant attention, the pressure to perform miracles with her music, and the ever-present fear of those who might seek to possess the lyre for their nefarious ends took their toll. Lyra realized that with every note she played, she danced on the edge of a knife, balancing between the light of creation and the darkness of destruction. In her heart, Lyra yearned for guidance she sought solace in the music, hoping to find answers within the divine melodies of the lyre. Yet the more she played, the more she felt the weight of her destiny pressing down upon her. She had been chosen by the gods, but for what purpose? Was she merely a vessel for the lyre's power? Or was there a greater role she was meant to fulfill? As the chapter of her discovery came to a close, Lyra stood at the precipice of an unknown future. The enchantment of her gift had enveloped her life in wonder, but it had also cast her into a world of complexity and danger. She realized that her journey was only just beginning, a path that would lead her through trials and tribulations, testing her strength, her courage and her heart. The melody of her destiny was still being written, a song of light and shadow, of enchantment and bewilderment. Chapter 2 The Gift and the Curse In the days that followed, Lyra's life became a tapestry of light and shadow, woven from the threads of her newfound fame. Her music, once a simple expression of her soul, had transformed into a beacon that drew the eyes of both mortals and gods. The village of Eurydica, previously unknown to the wider world, became a place of pilgrimage. People from far and wide, from lands whispered about in tales and songs, came to witness the miracle of Apollo's lyre in the hands of a mortal. Each performance was a spectacle of divine beauty a merging of heaven and earth through the melodies that flowed from the golden strings. The sick left healed, the sorrowful found joy, and the weary received new vigor. Yet, as the crowds grew, so too did the realization within Lyra that her gift was a double-edged sword. With each note played, she felt the growing burden of expectations, the weight of the eyes upon her, demanding ever hungry for the magic she could conjure. The attention was not solely of a benign nature. Whispers of envy and desire for the power she wielded began to spread, a dark undercurrent beneath the waves of admiration. The gods themselves, who watched from their lofty realms, were not immune to the allure of the lyre. 
Apollo, from whom the instrument had once been stolen, looked upon Lyra with a complex gaze, one of pride for the beauty she created and caution for the balance she disturbed. The fame that the lyre brought was intoxicating. A draught of nectar and ambrosia that elevated Lyra beyond her mortal constraints. Yet it also isolated her. Friends and family who once stood by her side now watched from a distance, awed and somewhat fearful of the power she commanded. The gap between her and the villagers widened, a chasm forged by the divine essence that flowed through her veins. Lyra began to feel the solitude that accompanies those touched by the divine, a loneliness that no amount of human company could dispel. Her connection to the lyre, though profound, underscored her separation from those she sought to help. She was a vessel of the gods, yet bound to the earth, caught in the interstice between the ethereal and the tangible. As the sun set each day, casting long shadows over the land, Lyra would retreat to the solitude of her home the lyre resting silently beside her. In these moments of quiet, she pondered her fate, the path that had been chosen for her. The music that had once been her solace now echoed with the voices of those who called out to her, a symphony of needs and desires. The realization dawned upon her that the gift she had been granted was as much a curse as it was a blessing. The power to heal and to bring joy was accompanied by the potential to destroy and to alienate. Her fame, though it brought her the adoration of many, also attracted the envy and greed of those who wished to possess the liar for themselves. Lyra stood at the threshold of destiny, aware that each step she took echoed in the halls of Olympus, watched by gods and mortals alike. Her journey had only just begun, a path fraught with trials and tribulations that would test the very essence of her being. The gift and the curse of the lyre were hers to bear, a melody of light and shadow that would define her legacy in the annals of myth and legend. As Lyra's fame reached the far corners of the earth, whispered on the lips of poets and sung by bards in distant lands, the shadow of envy grew ever longer. Among those drawn to Eurydica were not only the sick seeking healing and the sorrowful seeking solace, but also other musicians, their hearts darkened by jealousy. They watched from the fringes, their eyes alight with a desire not for the music, but for the power that lay within Apollo's lyre. These musicians, once celebrated in their own right, found their talents eclipsed by Lyra's divine gift. Where their music had once moved hearts, it now fell upon indifferent ears, for the world's attention was captivated by the melodies that flowed from the golden strings of the lyre. In the shadow of Lyra's fame, their envy festered, a poison that clouded their hearts and minds. But it was not only mortals who coveted the power of the lyre. Dark forces 
both human and divine, began to plot in secret. They whispered in the shadows, their schemes as intricate as the melodies that Lyra played. They sought not the beauty of the music, but the control it could exert over the natural world, the sway it held over the hearts and minds of men. The lyre, a treasure of the gods, became a beacon for those who desired power, a prize for which they would risk the wrath of Olympus. Among these dark forces was a sorcerer of great power. His heart blackened by years of bitterness and his mind sharp with cunning. He saw in the liar a means to ascend beyond his mortal constraints, to challenge the very gods themselves. With whispers of sweet promises and dark magic, he began to gather a following, others who, like him, sought to seize the lyre for their own purposes. The sorcerer knew that to take the lyre by force would be folly, for its power was great, and Lyra, though mortal, had the favour of the gods. Instead, he wove a web of deceit, planting seeds of doubt among the people of Eurydica, stirring the embers of envy and fear. He spun tales of calamity, suggesting that the liar's magic was too great for any mortal to wield, that it would bring ruin upon them all. Lyra, aware of the growing darkness, felt the weight of the envious eyes upon her. Each performance became a test, not only of her talent, but of her strength and resolve. She knew that the power of the liar, while a gift, was also a magnet for those who would use it for ill. The music that had once flowed freely from her heart now carried the burden of caution, each note a potential call to those who lurked in the shadows. The tension within Eurydica grew, a palpable force that hung in the air like a storm awaiting release. The villagers, once united in their admiration for Lyra, now whispered among themselves, their words a reflection of the sorcerer's deceit. The harmony that had prevailed was fraying, torn by unseen forces that sought to exploit the liar's power. Lyra stood at the center of this maelstrom, her spirit tested by the envious eyes that watched her every move. She knew that the challenge she faced was not merely one of talent, but of character. To wield the liar was to walk a path fraught with danger, a journey that would lead her into the heart of darkness. Yet, in the depths of her soul, she harbored a light that no shadow could extinguish, a resolve that would guide her through the trials to come. The battle for the liar was not just a clash of power, but a test of the human spirit, a saga that would be sung of in the ages to come, a tale of light and shadow, of envy and courage. Lyra, the humble musician with a divine gift, stood ready to defend her legacy, her music a beacon in the darkness that sought to envelop her world. In the midst of her trials, as the moon sailed high in the velvet night, casting silver beams through the window of her humble abode, Lyra received the visitors of an ethereal kind. 
the muses, divine patrons of the arts, beings of unparalleled beauty and wisdom, descended upon Eurydica. Their presence was as a gentle breeze, yet it carried the weight of the heavens. They came to Lyra, for her plight had stirred the waters of their concern, echoing through the halls of Mount Olympus. The muses, nine in number, each a guardian of a sacred art, encircled Lyra, their eyes filled with a light that spoke of creation and the boundless realms of inspiration. It was Calliope, the muse of epic poetry, who spoke first, her voice a melody that wove through the air. Lyra, chosen of Apollo, your journey has touched the stars and the depths of the earth, yet with such a gift comes a peril, a shadow that follows the light. Erato, the muse of lyrical poetry, stepped forward, her gaze piercing yet kind. The lyre you wield is of divine origin, its strings tied to the fate of the world. In your hands, it has the power to weave joy and sorrow, to mend the fabric of the cosmos or tear it asunder. Beware, for such power is coveted, not only by mortals, but by those who dwell in the realm of the gods. Terpsichor, muse of dance, move with grace that belied the seriousness of her words. Your art has brought harmony where there was discord, but the balance is delicate. The envy and desires of others cloud the air, darkening the skies with their intentions. You must tread with care, for the path you walk is fraught with danger. Melpomen, the muse of tragedy, her eyes deep pools of understanding added. The trials you face will test not only your talent, but the very essence of your spirit. Strength lies not in the avoidance of suffering, but in the resilience to overcome it. Remember, the greatest heroes are born from the greatest challenges. Thalia, with the smile that hinted at the joy amidst the turmoil, spoke of resilience. In the face of darkness, let your music be a beacon, for even in the deepest night, a single note can echo forth and bring forth dawn. The muses, each in turn, bestowed upon Lyra a gift, an ember of their divine essence to guide and protect her. From Calliope, a quill that held the ink of inspiration. From Erato, a rose whose scent would remind her of the beauty in creation. From Terpsichore, a ribbon that moved with the wind, symbolizing the dance of life. From Melpomene, a tear-shaped gem that gleamed with the light of empathy. And from Thalia, a mask that bore the dual faces of joy and sorrow, a reminder of the spectrum of human emotion. As the muses prepared to depart, their forms fading into the night, they spoke in unison, a chorus that resonated with the fabric of the universe. Lyra, daughter of Eurydica, Remember that you are not alone. The music you create is a thread in the tapestry of the world, woven from the heart. Hold fast to your courage, 
for it is the beacon that will guide you through the storm. And with that, they were gone, leaving Lyra in the silence of the night, her heart filled with a newfound resolve. The visit of the muses had been a warning and a blessing, a reminder of the responsibility she bore and the strength she harboured within. The dangers that lay ahead were many, but Lyra knew that she walked a path lit by the stars, her music a testament to the enduring spirit of creation. The trials to come would be many, but with the wisdom of the muses etched upon her soul, Lyra was ready to face them her lyre in hand, her heart ablaze with the fire of art and inspiration. In the days following the muses' visit, as Lyra pondered their counsel and prepared for the trials ahead, the heavens themselves stirred. It was during an evening as the sunset painted the sky in hues of orange and crimson, that Apollo, the god of music, light and prophecy, turned his gaze upon Eurydica. From his celestial realm, he beheld Lyra, the mortal who had unearthed his ancient life, and in whose hands the destiny of many now seemed to rest. Apollo, with his golden hair shining like the sun and his eyes reflecting the depths of the cosmos, descended upon a dream of Lyra's. The world around her faded into a realm of clouds and light, a space between the earth and Olympus where gods and mortals could meet. There, in a landscape born of dreams and divine will, Apollo stood before her, his presence overwhelming, yet imbued with an undeniable grace. Lyra of Eurydica, Apollo's voice resonated, harmonious and commanding. Your journey with my lyre has caught the attention of Olympus, you have wielded its power with a purity of heart and a passion for the art that honours me. However, the path you walk is fraught with peril, not just for you, but for the fabric of the world itself. He paused, his gaze piercing through the veils of mortality, reaching into the essence of her being. The lyre, my creation, is a conduit of divine power, a bridge between the mortal and the eternal. Its melodies can heal and destroy, bring joy and sorrow. In your hands, it has found a new voice, but with each note played, the balance of the world shifts. Apollo's form shimmered with light as he continued. You must prove yourself worthy of this gift, Lyra. The harmony of the universe is delicate, and the power you wield can either uphold it or unravel it. The eyes of the gods are upon you, and not all are pleased to see such power in the hands of a mortal. A solemnity entered his tone, a gravity that underscored the seriousness of his words. Should you falter, should the lyre become a tool for discord rather than harmony, the wrath of Olympus will be swift. The consequences of such a failure would not just be yours to bear, but would ripple through the cosmos affecting all of creation. Yet as he spoke, a warmth entered his expression, 
softening the warning with a promise of hope. Prove yourself worthy, Lyra. Let your heart guide the music you create. Let your melodies be a testament to the beauty and complexity of existence. Do this, and you will have the blessing of Olympus. The path ahead is yours to choose. But remember, greatness is not just in the power you wield, but in the wisdom with which you use it. With those final words, Apollo faded from her dream, leaving Lyra to awaken in the quiet of the night, his warning echoing in her mind. The encounter had been ethereal, transcendent, yet the message was clear and grounded in reality. She was at a crossroads, with the eyes of the gods upon her, and the weight of destiny on her shoulders. The warning from Olympus was a stark reminder of the responsibility she bore. The lyre, with all its beauty and power, was not just an instrument of music, but a symbol of the balance between the mortal and divine, a balance that she must now strive to maintain. With Apollo's words as her guide, Lyra resolved to face the challenges ahead with courage and wisdom. Her music a bridge between worlds, her spirit a beacon of light in the darkness. As the dawn broke, casting its first light upon Eurydica, Lyra knew that her journey was not just about proving her worthiness to the gods, but about navigating the delicate harmony of existence itself. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with trials and tribulations, but in her heart she carried the flame of inspiration, the blessing of the muses and the warning of Apollo ready to forge her destiny with the strings of the divine lyre. In the wake of Apollo's warning, Lyra found herself ensnared in a paradox of existence, where the ethereal gift of music bestowed upon her bore the weight of the world. The divine lyre, once a symbol of her dreams and aspirations, had become a beacon that drew forth the darkest corners of human nature and the piercing scrutiny of the gods. Her fame, a once cherished bloom, had wilted into infamy as every strum of the lyre's golden strings echoed with the burdensome reality of her newfound existence. Lyra's simple life in Eurydica, marked by the rhythms of nature and the harmonies of village camaraderie, had been irrevocably altered. The village, once a sanctuary of solace and unspoken understandings, had transformed into a stage where the eyes of the world, both mortal and divine, were fixated upon her. With every note she played, the expectations grew, a mire of demands and desires that sought to shape her music and with it, her essence. The villagers, who had once rejoiced in the miracles of her music, now approached her with a reverence tinged with fear. The intimacy of shared glances and laughter had been replaced by the distance reserved for those touched by the divine. Lyra, the heart of Eurydica, found herself isolated in the very midst of her community, 
a lone figure upon a pedestal she had never sought to ascend. As her fame spread, so too did the stories of her encounters with the Divine. The visit of the Muses and the warning from Apollo were whispered about in hushed tones, elevating her status to that of a mythic figure, a mortal who walked the line between the human and the celestial. This reverence brought not solace but profound sense of displacement as if she were a stranger in her own life. The gift of the lyre, with its heavenly melodies and the power to sway the hearts of men and gods, had become a double-edged sword. Each performance, once a pure expression of her innermost self, now carried with it the weight of consequence. The joy of creation was overshadowed by the fear of a misstep, the worry that a single wrong note could unravel the delicate tapestry of existence itself. The challenges that lay before her, once a path to proving her worthiness, had morphed into a labyrinth of expectations and uncertainties. The divine warning from Apollo loomed large in her thoughts, a constant reminder of the balance she must maintain, a harmony between the mortal and the divine that rested in her hands. In the solitude of her room, with the lyre resting silently beside her, Lyra contemplated the journey that had led her to this moment. The dream of music that had filled her heart with light now seemed an unbearable weight, a burden she bore alone. The transformation from a simple musician to a figure of mythic proportions was complete. But at what cost? Yet, in the depths of her despair, a spark of resolve flickered. Lyra understood that her path was not simply one of trial and tribulation, but of growth and self-discovery. The gift of the lyre, for all its complexities, was also a testament to her strength, a call to rise above the expectations and fears that sought to bind her. With the dawn of a new day, Lyra stood at the window, watching as the first rays of sunlight painted the village in hues of gold and amber. In the light, she saw not the weight of her burdens, but the possibility of hope, a reminder that even in the darkest night, the stars shine brightest. The unbearable lightness of her gift was a challenge, a curse turned into a trial of her spirit. But it was also a call to embrace the complexities of her existence, to find the harmony within the discord, and to wield the lyre not as a weapon of power, but as an instrument of peace. With a renewed sense of purpose, Lyra resolved to face the trials ahead with courage and grace. The path was fraught with challenges, but it was hers to walk, a journey not into the darkness, but towards the light. As Lyra navigated the complexities of her newfound existence, her tail caught the attention of Pan, the god of the wild, shepherds and flocks, known for his mischievous nature and his flute that echoed through the forests and mountains. Pan, with his half-man, half-goat form, 
had watched Lyra from the shadows, his eyes filled with a mixture of admiration and burning desire. He coveted not just the beauty of Apollo's lyre, but the control it wielded over nature, a power he longed to possess. One evening, as Lyra wandered the outskirts of Eurydica, seeking solace in the embrace of nature away from the prying eyes of the world, Pan seized his opportunity. The air grew thick with the scent of wildflowers and the sound of rustling leaves, as if the forest itself was conspiring with the god. Without warning, Lyra found herself ensnared in a dance of shadows and whispers, the world around her spinning as Pan emerged from the veil of twilight. With a grin that spoke of untamed wildness and cunning, Pan spoke. Lyra, whose music has tamed the hearts of mortals and gods alike, come with me. Your destiny lies not within the confines of human settlements, but in the untamed expanses of the world, where the power of your music can truly flourish. Before Lyra could react, she was swept away, not by force, but by a melody that rose from Payne's flute a tune that spoke to the very essence of her being, compelling her to follow. They traveled through realms unseen, where the sky was painted with the hues of dreams and the earth pulsed with ancient magic. When Lyra's senses returned to her, she found herself in a grove that seemed to exist out of time. A place where the trees whispered secrets of the ages and the air shimmered with enchantment. Here Pan revealed his true desire to wield the liar's power to become the supreme ruler of nature, bending the will of the forests the mountains and the rivers to his whims. Lyra, Pan declared, his eyes alight with fervor. Your music has the power to bridge the realms of mortal and divine, to command the forces of nature itself. Together, we can reshape the world, ushering in an era where the wild reigns supreme unbound by the laws of gods and men. Lyra, despite the allure of Pan's vision, felt a chill run through her heart. She understood the gravity of her situation, trapped in the grasp of a god whose desires threatened to unravel the balance of the world. The kidnapping was not just an act of desire, but a challenge, a trial that would test the very limits of her courage and her loyalty to the harmony of existence. With the lyre in her hands, Lyra faced Pan, her resolve hardening. She knew that to succumb to his wishes would be to betray the gift Apollo had bestowed upon her to forsake the wisdom of the muses and to ignore the warning that had echoed from the heavens. Her music was not a tool of dominion, but a beacon of harmony, a testament to the beauty and complexity of life. In that moment, Lyra made her choice. With a voice that carried the weight of her conviction, she spoke. Pan, your vision is one of conquest, not harmony. The power of the lyre is not to command but to unite, to celebrate the intricate dance of nature 
not to enslave it. I cannot, I will not be a party to your desires. The standoff between Lyra and Pain, beneath the canopy of an ancient grove, set the stage for her greatest challenge yet. It was a clash of wills, a battle of ideologies that would determine the fate of the liar and the balance of the natural world. As the first notes of defiance rang from the strings of the lyre, Lyra stood ready, her spirit unbroken, prepared to face whatever trials Pan might conjure. The kidnapping, far from breaking her, had ignited a fire within, a determination to defend the sanctity of her gift and the harmony of the world. The story of Lyra and Pan, a tale of beauty and desire, of courage and conviction, would be whispered among the trees and sung by the rivers, a saga of a mortal who dared to defy a god for the sake of harmony. Chapter 3 The Trials of Harmony In the heart of the enchanted grove, under the watchful eyes of ancient trees that stood as silent witnesses to the unfolding drama, Lyra found herself at a crossroads of destiny. The confrontation with Pan, though fraught with peril, had ignited within her a resolve that burned with the clarity of a starlit sky. She understood, with the depth of certainty that transcended the fears and doubts that had plagued her, that her journey with the lyre was not merely about wielding its power, but about stewarding its gift with wisdom and grace. As the first light of dawn pierced the veil of night, casting golden beams through the canopy above, Lyra felt the bonds of Pan's enchantment loosen. It was not through force that she sought her freedom, but through the very essence of her being, the music that flowed from her soul. With the melody that spoke of hope and resilience, she wove a song of liberation, the notes shimmering in the air, breaking the chains of Pan's desire with the purity of her intent. The grove itself seemed to respond, the ancient magic that pervaded the place recognizing the truth in Lyra's music. As Pan watched, a mixture of admiration and defeat in his gaze. He understood that Lyra was not a mere mortal to be ensnared, but a force of nature, a melody in human form that could not be contained. With her escape from Pan's clutches, Lyra embarked on the quest for restoration a journey to heal the rifts her absence had created and to restore the balance that had been disturbed. The liar, once a burden heavy with expectation and fear, now felt light in her hands, a symbol of her commitment to harmony and her determination to prove her worthiness. Her path led her through landscapes both wondrous and perilous, from verdant valleys where the air was thick with the scent of blooming flowers, to desolate plains where the wind whispered of ancient sorrows. Along the way, Lyra encountered beings both mortal and divine, each encounter a trial that tested her resolve, her compassion 
and her understanding of the delicate balance she sought to uphold. With every challenge she faced, Lyra's music evolved, becoming a reflection of her journey. It was no longer just an expression of her own desires and dreams, but a dialogue with the world around her, a celebration of the interconnectedness of all things. The lyre, through her hands, sang of the beauty of the dawn, the quiet strength of the mountains, and the enduring flow of the rivers, each note a testament to the resilience of the spirit and the power of harmony. As she traversed the myriad landscapes of her quest, Lyra came to realize that the restoration she saw was not just about mending the rifts in the world, but about reconciling the contradictions within herself the fear and doubt that had once clouded her vision gave way to a deeper understanding of her role as a guardian of the liar's power, a bridge between the mortal and the divine. The quest for restoration, though fraught with trials, was also a journey of self-discovery pilgrimage to the heart of harmony where the music of the lyre and the song of her soul became one. Lyra's journey had transformed her, not by diminishing the weight of her gift, but by teaching her to carry it with grace, to wield the power of the lyre not as a weapon or a burden, but as a beacon of hope and a harbinger of balance. As the final notes of her song of liberation echoed through the grove, Lyra stepped forth into the world anew, her heart light with the knowledge that the true power of the lyre lay not in its ability to control, but in its capacity to unite, to heal, and to inspire. The quest for restoration had begun, setting the stage for the trials of harmony that lay ahead, each a step on the path to proving her worthiness to wield the liar's power responsibly and to restore the balance that was the essence of her destiny. Lyra's journey, guided by the quest for restoration, next led her to the azure depths of the Aegean Sea, where the waters whispered ancient secrets and the horizon melded sky and sea into an endless blue. It was here that she encountered the sirens, creatures of beguiling beauty and perilous song whose melodies had lured countless sailors to their doom. The sirens, aware of Lyra's quest and the divine lyre she bore, saw in her a challenge and an opportunity to weave their voices into the tapestry of legend. As Lyra approached the siren's idol, her heart was calm, her resolve firm. She had heard tales of these beings, of their enchanting voices and the graves that dotted their shore, a testament to the power of their song. Yet, she felt no fear, only a profound curiosity and a determination to face the trial that awaited her. The sirens, with hair like woven gold and eyes as deep as the sea, greeted Lyra not with hostility, but with a melody of haunting beauty, a song that spoke of desires unfulfilled, of dreams lost in the depths of the ocean. 
Their voices, in harmony with the rhythm of the waves, sought to ensnare Lyra, to draw her into their lament and bind her to their isle. Lyra, standing firm upon the deck of her vessel, lyre in hand, listened to their song and understood the challenge before her. It was not a battle of strength, but of spirit. A contest of melodies where the prize was not conquest, but understanding. With a deep breath, Lyra raised her lyre and began to play. Her music, pure and clear, rose above the siren song, a counterpoint to their melody of sorrow. But Lyra, guided by the wisdom gained from her journey, did not seek to overpower the sirens. Instead, she listened to their song, finding within it a beauty and a pain that resonated with her own experiences. Gradually, Lyra's music shifted, weaving her notes into the siren song not as a challenge, but as an accompaniment, a harmony that acknowledged their pain and offered solace. The sirens, taken aback by this act of empathy and understanding, found themselves drawn into the music, their voices blending with Lyra's in a melody that spoke of hope, of healing, and of the unity found in shared sorrow. The encounter with the sirens, which had begun as a trial, became a moment of profound connection. A realization for Lyra that true harmony was not about dominance or submission, but about the coming together of disparate voices, each enriching the other. By choosing to harmonize with the sirens rather than silence them, Lyra learned the value of collaboration, of listening and understanding, and the strength that comes from humility. As the song reached its crescendo, the isle that had once been a graveyard of dreams transformed the graves giving way to blooms of ethereal beauty, a symbol of the renewal that comes from acceptance and unity. The sirens, their curse lifted by the power of shared harmony, were freed from their eternal lament, their spirits joining the melody that now filled the air a song of liberation that echoed across the seas. Lyra, her heart light with the knowledge gained from the encounter, sailed forth from the isle. The siren song a part of her music, a reminder of the trial she had faced and the truth she had discovered. The challenge of the sirens had been a testament to the power of music, not just to destroy, but to heal, to unite, and to elevate. It was a lesson that Lyra would carry with her as she continued her quest. Her spirit buoyed by the harmony that had emerged from the heart of the trial a harmony that spoke of the boundless potential of collaboration and the humble strength found in understanding the voices of others. Lyra's journey, enriched by the lessons of harmony and humility learned from the sirens, next led her to the sun-baked sands of Egypt, where ancient mysteries whispered on the wind. It was here, at the crossroads of the world, that she encountered the Sphinx, a creature of legend with the body of a lion, 
the wings of an eagle and the face of a woman. The Sphinx, known for her enigmatic riddles, awaited Lyra with a challenge that delved deep into the realms of wisdom and insight. As Lyra approached, the Sphinx regarded her with eyes that had seen the rise and fall of empires, her gaze piercing the veil of time. Lyra, bearer of Apollo's lyre, the Sphinx intoned, her voice a melody of ages past and futures yet to unfold. You have traveled far and learned much, yet before you can proceed, you must answer my riddle, a query that probes the essence of your quest and the heart of your music. Lyra stood before the Sphinx, her mind calm, her heart open to the challenge. She understood that the riddle posed was not merely a test of intellect, but a reflection of her journey, a mirror of the truths she had gleaned from her encounters with the divine and the mortal alike. The Sphinx spoke her words weaving a tapestry of mystery and revelation. What is that which gives voice to the silent, brings tears to the eyes of the stoic, and moves the hearts of stone? It can calm the raging storm and fan the flames of passion. It is both universal and intimate, a whisper of the cosmos in the ear of the soul. Lyra pondered the riddle, her thoughts drifting through the melodies and harmonies that had marked her path. She thought of the sirens and their song of sorrow, of the villages of Eurydica and their simple joys and fears of Pan and his wild, untamed desire. Each encounter, each note played on the lyre, had revealed to her the multifaceted nature of music, its power to transcend language, culture and time. With a clarity born of her experiences, Lyra answered, The essence you seek the answer to your riddle is music itself. It is the voice of the silent, for it speaks where words fail, expressing the inexpressible. It brings tears to the eyes of the stoic, for it touches the deepest recesses of the heart, awakening emotions long buried. It moves the hearts of stone, for even the coldest spirit cannot resist its call. Music calms the storm within us and fans the flames of our deepest passions, a reflection of the universe's harmony in the soul of every being. The Sphinx, upon hearing Lyra's answer, smiled, a rare expression that softened the ancient lines of her visage. Wisely spoken, Lyra. You have understood the true essence of music, not as a tool of power, but as a bridge between the worlds, a harmonizer of the disparate, a healer of the wounded spirit. With her answer, the Sphinx granted Lyra passage her trial a testament to the growth and maturity that Lyra had attained. The riddle of the Sphinx, a challenge that had stymied many who had come before, was a reflection of Lyra's journey, a journey that had transformed her from a simple musician to a guardian of harmony a wielder of the liar's power with wisdom and compassion. 
As Lyra continued on her path, the lessons of the Sphinx's riddle etched upon her heart. She carried with her a deeper understanding of her purpose. The trials she faced were not mere obstacles, but stepping stones, each revealing a facet of the music that was her gift and her burden. The riddle of the Sphinx, with its emphasis on insight and the essence of music, had prepared Lyra for the challenges that lay ahead. Challenges that would test not just her skill and courage, but the depth of her wisdom and the breadth of her soul. Lyra's odyssey, a tapestry woven with the threads of trials and revelations, had led her to the very heart of her journey's purpose. Each challenge faced, each lesson learned, had been a step towards understanding the profound responsibility bestowed upon her by fate and the gods. Her path now converged with destiny in a way she could never have anticipated, bringing her before Apollo, the god of music, prophecy, and the arts, the divine source of her liar's power. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with strokes of crimson and gold, Apollo descended from the heavens, his presence enveloping the world in a radiant light. The god stood before Lyra, his countenance bearing a mixture of anticipation and solemnity. Lyra of Eurydica, Apollo began, his voice resonating with the harmony of the spheres. Your journey has been one of profound transformation. You have faced the trial set before you with courage and wisdom, proving your resilience and your dedication to the harmony of all things. Apollo paused, allowing the weight of his words to sink into the fabric of the moment. However, one final challenge remains. To truly ascertain your worthiness to wield my lyre, you must engage in a musical duel with me. This contest will not be one of mere skill, but of spirit. A reflection of your understanding of music's true essence and its place in the tapestry of the cosmos. Lyra, standing before the god of music, felt a calm resolve settle over her. The journey that had honed her spirit and deepened her connection to the lyre had prepared her for this moment. She understood that the duel was not a test of dominance, but a dialogue, a communion of souls through the language of music. As the first stars of the evening began to shimmer in the twilight sky, Lyra and Apollo took their places, the air around them charged with anticipation. With a nod from Apollo, the duel commenced. Apollo, with a skill born of divinity, played a melody that echoed the creation of the world, a song of light and shadow, of birth and rebirth. His music was a force of nature, commanding and sublime, weaving the elements into a symphony of celestial beauty. Lyra, listening to Apollo's composition, felt the stirrings of inspiration within her. Lifting her lyre, she responded with a melody of her own, a song that spoke of the human experience, of joy and sorrow, of struggle and triumph. 
Her music, infused with the wisdom gained from her trials, was a testament to the resilience of the spirit, a harmony that embraced Apollo's divine melody, not in competition but in collaboration. The duel, fierce in its intensity, became a dance of light and sound, a convergence of the mortal and the divine. Lyra and Apollo, through their music, explored the depths of existence, the pain of loss and the ecstasy of creation, their melodies intertwining in a celebration of the universe's boundless complexity. As the final notes faded into the silence of the night, a profound stillness enveloped the world. Apollo, regarding Lyra with a gaze that held the wisdom of the ages, nodded in acknowledgement. Lyra, your music has revealed the depth of your understanding and the purity of your heart. You have shown yourself worthy of the lyre, not through mastery of its strings, but through your insight into the soul of music itself. The duel, though fierce, had ended in mutual respect, a recognition of the bond that music had forged between them. Apollo, impressed by Lyra's journey, and her dedication to the principles of harmony and empathy bestowed upon her his blessing, affirming her place as a guardian of the liar's sacred power. Lyra, standing under the canopy of stars, felt a sense of completion, a knowing that her journey had reached its zenith. The duel with Apollo had not been a conclusion, but a beginning. A confirmation of her role as a conduit between the earthly and the divine. A steward of the harmony that binds the universe together. In the aftermath of the celestial duel, under the canopy of a starlit sky, Apollo the god of music, prophecy, and the arts, bestowed upon Lyra a gift of profound significance. With a gesture that bridged the heavens and the earth, he allowed her to keep the lyre, recognizing in her not only an unmatched musical talent, but an unwavering spirit capable of wielding such divine power with wisdom and humility. Lyra, Apollo spoke, his voice carrying the warmth of the sun and the promise of dawn. Your journey has shown you to be a true guardian of harmony. The lyre, through which the music of the cosmos flows, remains with you. May its strings sing of the unity and the beauty that binds all creation. Lyra, holding the lyre, felt a surge of gratitude and resolve. The instrument, once a symbol of her quest, had become a part of her essence, a testament to her growth and the trials she had overcome. With Apollo's blessing, she knew that her journey, while marked by moments of doubt and challenge, had led her to a deeper understanding of her purpose and the true power of music. With the lyre in her possession and the blessings of Apollo guiding her path, Lyra returned to her village of Eurydica, the world which had once seemed so small and familiar, now unfolded before her with the depth of a vast tapestry, rich with the hues of experience and the melodies of countless stories. 
As she entered the village, her heart brimming with songs yet to be sung, the people of Eurydica gathered, their eyes reflecting a mixture of awe and joy. Lyra, standing before her community, played the lyre, its golden strings resonating with the harmony of the heavens and the vibrancy of the earth. The music that flowed from her fingers was a balm to weary souls, a spark of inspiration in the hearts of dreamers, and a bridge that mended the rifts of misunderstanding and fear. Her melody spoke of the trial she had faced, of the wisdom she had gained, and of the unity that underpins all existence. The power of the lyre, once a burden that threatened to overwhelm her spirit, had become a force for good, a tool through which Lyra could heal, inspire and unite. Her gift, recognized and honed through the challenges bestowed upon her by gods and fate, now served the people of Eurydica and beyond, bringing light to the shadows and harmony to the discordant. Lyra's return marked a new era for the village and for herself. No longer the humble musician who had embarked on a journey of discovery, she had become a legend in her own right a symbol of the transformative power of music and the enduring strength of the human spirit. Through her, the lyre's divine melodies reverberated, touching the lives of all who heard them, reminding each soul of the beauty and complexity of existence. The balance Lyra achieved between her desires and her responsibilities, between the call of adventure and the ties of home, became a guiding light for those who sought to find their own path. Her story, woven into the fabric of myths and legends, served as a testament to the possibility of harmony both within oneself and in the world at large. In the heart of Eurydica, under the watchful gaze of the stars and the benevolent eyes of the gods, Lyra lived out her days, her music a constant companion. The lyre, a gift from the heavens, had found its true guardian in Lyra, whose journey had revealed the essence of harmony, a melody that transcends the boundaries of time and space, uniting all in a symphony of light and life. 